we're arriving at Hayhall and we're here to meet a gorgeous little golden retriever puppy called Stitch. Uh, I'm super excited about this one because A, I love shooting puppies. Who doesn't love playing with puppies? And B, golden leaves, golden puppy. Yes. <laughs> right, do you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to put a plastic bag down my trousers. And it looks a bit weird. The last time I was wet and cold and I really regretted it. Look! <laughs> Hello, gorgeous puppy! Hi! Hello! Oh my gosh, he's gorgeous! Hello! Hi! Oh, you are lovely! You're so happy! We'd only gone meters from the car and I spotted this sea of orange. I know we're right by the car park. <laughs> How many good shots have I got by the cars though? <laughs> yeah, I look at it, it's beautiful. I think we should do something. I positioned my model between the trees, making sure that nothing was sticking out of his head, and then I had Michael throw <laughs> leaves in the air. And I'm going to Photoshop these leaves into the scenario. Oh, having a little drink. <laughs> Right in our path was a huge puddle begging for some photos to be taken in front of it. And so we did. The leaf on the water. Yeah, try that again. You see okay. there? Yeah. I actually think this looks nice with the white and the white. That looks nicer. I think so. Yeah, do that. Shall we go with that instead? Yeah. Okay. The shot has developed. When I'm shooting, I very often discuss a shot I've taken with Michael so that we can craft the shot together and get the very best out of that moment. Just around the corner was the perfect spot for a big sky photo. Look at that, the sun's come out too. Like the tree's perfect. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna have to bring my settings out. It's got very sunny all of a sudden. Hang on. He likes that. Oh no! <laughs> Thank you. You got it. Ah, uh, uh, nope. Wide angle portraits like this can be really tricky to get because if the dog moves just a little bit left or right, it can completely blow out the composition. Having an assistant in this scenario is essential. When I'm shooting, I'm always looking for areas that either contrast or complement the dog's fur. This building was a near enough exact match to Stitch. While I'm working out a shot of my composition, I'll very often just pull Michael in and ask him to do his best dog impression for me so that I can, uh, you know, Frame up the photo, ready for my dog model to take his place. Yeah, yeah, you stay where you are, and then if you guys just walk up to that fountain over there. Yeah, super. As we walked into the woods, I asked our party to start collecting the most vibrant leaves that they could find on the ground. I wanted to surround Stitch with a halo of orange, and our first strategy was to put the leaves in his collar. But Stitch being a puppy, he was having none of it, and proceeded to run off with the props. So instead, I opted to hold the leaves out in front of my lens, which created a beautiful sense of depth between me and my model. All right. To finish up, I got some extra frames of the leaves in front of my lens that I could Photoshop in afterwards. Admittedly, this next spot wasn't the most accessible of spaces. I had to climb over an old fallen and rather slippy tree to get to it and then have Michael hold Stitch up on the other side so that he could actually see me on the other side of the log. Ah, they're beautiful, beautiful. This modelling gig is tiring, a eh, Stitch? Belly rubs. If you want to have a run, you're getting lucky. Go on, let's let him have a run. Let's let you have a run. For action shots, I typically use a telephoto lens usually a 70 to 200. This is because the lens's compression cuts out all the clutter in the background and makes composition much easier to nail when the subject is darting from point A to point B. It's often a case of repetition with action shots just to make sure that the focus is nailed and that the dog's expression is bob on. We've just stuck some logs on the ground, some tiny little twigs with the hope that he clears them. And it doesn't have to be something huge to get a dog to jump over the log. It just has to be something small. They see it in their periphery and you know, even just a small line on the floor and they jump over it. So let's see how he does. Come on, <laughs> All right. I'm always looking for ways to frame my subject and tie them into the environment around them. 
This den was perfect, so I asked Michael to stand in again for me. Michael in the den. He's a good dog. The background in this scenario was super busy and it was kind of tricky to get the right angle, making sure that the branches were framing stitch, but at the same time not creating too much distraction. Fortunately, the shade cast by the branches created contrast between him and the background. Stitch, you waiting? <laughs> the initial composition still looks a little busier than I would have liked. With Stitch being so close to the outside of the den, there wasn't quite enough separation between the two. So after a little break, we popped him back in his spot, placing him a little further into the den this time. I also shifted my angle round to cut out some of that clutter. Considering this little guy is only 20 weeks old, he's been a seasoned pro today. I think some of that's also credit to Michael for being an excellent dog whisperer. <laughs> now we're gonna head back to the studio now and get these photographs all edited up for his mum and dad to view, aren't we? Hey, you've been such a good boy. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up or let me know in the comments if that's your thing. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss our next dog photography adventure. See you then.